Good afternoon. Got my softball shirt on in honor of Mike Kendrea today, going into the Hall of Fame tonight. I um, want to congratulate the uh, eight members of the Arizona Athletics Hall of Fame uh, induction tonight. Uh, Fred Batiste, Corey Chitwood, uh, Brittany Lestrapis, Austin Thompson, Ben Grotto, Willie Williams, Jim Livengood, and our very own Coach Kendrea. So um, obviously it's great that he's still so a part of our athletic program, uh, was with him yesterday, and uh, certainly a special congratulations to him winning eight national championships. Uh, excited for the week uh, coming up, the game on Saturday. Our guys have continued to trust the process of building this program. And um, I think every day, if we work on all the little things um, to make sure that we get our details and our fundamentals right, um, we'll continue to build this program up to where we want it to go. Um, I believe that our players are uh, trusting this process. I believe that our coaches have done a tremendous job in continuing to improve and work um, schematically. Uh, we've got a great challenge ahead of us in terms of defending Coach Leach, as well as um, offensively going against uh, their defensive coordinator, Coach Arnett, and as well as the special teams side of things. So all three of those are going to be a big, big challenge for us. Um, and uh, we have to continue to improve in order for us to be able to be the type of program that one day we want to be. And uh, we need to take this opportunity on Saturday night to be the next step of the build but recognize that, um, you know, it's one game, one opportunity, and we just have to continue to uh, improve. Do you see uh, similarities in Mississippi's defense since he came, Arnett came from San Diego State? Yeah, I mean, he was at nine years at San Diego State. There's a lot of, uh, you can see foundational principles, I guess I would say, that uh, what, what they try to do, what they do with their fronts, um, what they do with their coverage. Uh, there's certainly um, some things he's taken and made his own. And uh, he, he gives a little different look than what San Diego State gives you. But um, yeah, you could see that they're from the same family. What's your overall perspective on time of I think that time of possession helps the defense. That that would be my overall my overall feeling of time of possession is if offensively you're holding the ball, um, you're able to keep the defense off the field, which is which is good. It's good statistically. It's good um, in terms of especially in this type of game where uh, they're going to um, you know they're they're a very potent offensive attack. Uh, when it comes down to it, though, I think you have to do what's best to move the football on offense. Um, I believe that, uh, you know, the other team's going to have to do what's best to move the ball offensively on their end. It's one of those weird stats that probably end up in the end. If you have a good time possession, probably you win more than you lose. But I would bet it's uh, closer to 50 50 um, and probably more so just statistically helps your defense. Maybe cover Jacob Cowing a little differently now that he kind of had his coming out party, and how do you adjust to that? Well, you know, Jacob had one good game, um, and he had a, a a good year at UTEP prior. So people, uh, I think he's consistently been the same guy each week. You know how they defend him. You know you're going to have to if you're going to defend him differently, then that means you're going to defend T Mac differently because now you're. Defense isn't going to be the same. If you defend T-Mac and Jacob differently, then you're going to defend Dorian differently or the running game differently. Um, you know, how many guys are you going to extend out to cover guys? So there's always going to be a game plan uh, aspect to any team, any game. Uh, how they want to defend a certain player or a certain scheme will always um, probably be unique each week. But uh, we'd have to try to understand it pretty quick in the game and then see what, what we can do. Um, but – you know, good players find ways to get open. And, um, you know, and I, I believe that, that he's that. You know, clearly, if you look at Cooper Cup last year, you know, the ball was thrown to him 195 times, caught 145 passes. Um, I think people knew they were going to throw it to him. How many times have you coached against uh, Mike Leach? And are they basically doing what they did at Washington and just different players? 
Well, zero is the first uh, is the answer. And then what he did at Washington State, what he did at Valdosta State, what he did at Kentucky, what he's done at uh, Texas Tech, obviously, for a long time. And he, Mike Leach is a, a is a very, 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 very good football coach that knows exactly what he wants to do on offense. And you're going to see um, his scheme. I'm sure he'll adjust a play or two here or there each week. Uh, I really don't know too much more about that system. Um, I've never had a chance to coach as an assistant coach in the air raid offense. So, uh, but I would believe that the principles haven't changed for him and since he was at Iowa Wesleyan. And then how did uh, the players get the blue suits for pregame? Uh, how did they get them, meaning the athletic department or – Thing. Yeah. Oh, how do they come about going with the blue suits? Yeah. Well, you know, they came to me at the end of last season or probably in the spring and they said, coach, um, for our travel, can we eliminate the warm up suits and go more to a jacket and tie mentality and um, treat it more like a business trip, so to speak. Um, and when they did that, we spoke with Barry, our head of equipment. He spoke with Derek and Dave Hickey and um, to see if we could do it. And a lot of teams do it uh, across the country, and uh, they were all for it. They felt great about it. Um, all of our kids got measured, tailored up, and um, you know we gave them a bunch of selections in regards to ties, but uh, we wanted to keep it pretty uniformed in regard to the suits, and uh, that's what they asked for. That was the players all the way, uh, our leadership council, our captains, and um, that's what they wanted to do. Not just one game, but who have you heard from after the win? Did you hear from Teddy Bruschi? Anybody else call up to congratulate your comment? Yeah, I mean, we there's you know there's going to be a, a lot of people that text and call and um, after each game, win or lose. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that there's a lot of guys invested in this build, and there's a lot of guys that want to be a, um, that cheer hard for Arizona football. And uh, I appreciate all of those people. Obviously, Teddy is very invested. So I speak with Teddy every week. And um, he's a great, great ally to the program, a great part of our program, um, as are so many others that have helped us along the way and invested in our program and, and want to see this build occur and want to see us continue to get better every day. Coach Hansen said that the best play on defense was the touchdown that Isaiah Rutherford allowed because yeah. teammates came over and picked him up off the ground. You couldn't really see it on the TV copy. Did, you, did he tell you that? Did you notice it on film, and what do you think about that? Yeah, I saw it on the coach's copy. It didn't show up on the TV copy. They kind of went back real quick to you know, the celebration and then a replay. But when you watch the, uh, uh, you know, the All-22 or the coach's copy, what, what you saw was um, really a, a huge indication of the Wildcat football principles, which we talk about playing with passion and loving your teammates. And I thought what was really cool about it is that um, when that occurs, and it's going to occur, it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup, it's a fade ball, it's a 50-50 opportunity, the other team came down with it. What was so neat was that everybody ran over to him, and I don't know if it was, hey, next play, or if it was, we got your back, or if it was, hey, you know, we love you, we know it's not going to happen again type mentality but when he was swarmed in the same way as I think he would have been if he knocked the ball down and that was the coolest part about what we're trying to get done here you went with uh, white uniforms first few games uh, at home last season are you doing that again this year no we're gonna wear blue Dalton Johnson had a blocked punt he's one of, it seems like he's emerged as one of your top special teams guys like a little bit of defense can you just kind of talk about his development here sure uh you know the the we had Matt Slater talk to our team um, when we first got here, and we replayed it again this, this uh, spring. And what was important about what, what Matthew said to the team, and Matt's now an 11-time captain at New England, was the importance of special teams and how you can impact your team and impact your, every chance you have. And when you want to start building your program, you have to find – um, different phases of a game. You can't just build it on offense or build it on defense. You have to build it on special teams, build it on offense, build it on defense, and try to win in that kicking game area. What Dalton embraced was, hey, coach, I'm going to compete as hard as I possibly can to be a starting safety here. And uh, I, he comes from uh, Katy, Texas, which has a great football program. Uh, had a great chance. You know, he was a true freshman last year and really 
uh, embraced the grind of working hard, but he also embraced, uh, embraced the opportunity to impact the game with the kicking game. And this, uh, this off season and with Coach Pow Pow, he spent the extra time of saying, hey, if I'm not the starting safety right now, you know, if I'm backing up Christian Young, how can I help the team still? And that mentality is what you ask for. And uh, you could see it in reflection in the way he played that first game on the, on the punt block. But it was also he made a tackle and kickoff coverage. Uh, he had the highest production, and uh, we gave him a game ball for his special teams. Pressure on the other team. I know your defense is going to try to hold them down, but if the case turns into a track meet, how do you prepare your coaching staff and your players if it turns into a shootout? Well, I mean, well, our hope and expectation is when we have the ball on offense, uh, we get to move the ball down there and try to score. And when they have the ball on, on offense, we're going to do everything we can to stop them. And uh, all we can control is, you know, when we have the ball. Uh, as an offensive staff, and all we can control on defensively is do everything you can to take the ball away. You know, we're, we're always going to prepare for a game where we're going to have to score. And um, I think that that's a big part of what we've asked our guys to do when we talked originally about, you know, the pillars of this program as we're building it was, you know, two and three were players and schematics. And uh, as we're continuing to, you know, build up our players and get them to become uh, better fundamentally sound and, and better at their jobs, our coaches, as we continue to look at ways to move the football or prevent them from moving the football, uh, it's all going to come back to, you know, that culture of, hey, you got to trust this process. You got to play next play regardless of the score. The defensive backs because they're going to be they're going to be under the gun pressure constantly this entire game. Have fun, compete, you know, trust the process, uh, you know, play the next play, and um, and play it with passion. What did Tanner McLaughlin show you guys to earn the role that he played? Yeah, that was that was. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this at the end of the. Uh, we gave him a scholarship the night before the game. Uh, we were able to announce to the team we had one scholarship available. And we were able to give it to him on that Friday evening. Um, I forgot to mention that Saturday after the game, but hats off to him. Uh, really what he's shown is when he got here, uh, although he chose to walk on, he was going to compete and uh, really do everything he possibly could to find his way on the field. And uh, he's fast. He can catch. He's big. He gives you uh, a, a really good uh, passing target. He has great hands. He's built a great trust up with our players and with our quarterbacks. And he just came in here coming off of an ACL injury, which he rehabbed uh, through YouTube. Uh, is how he learned how to rehab because at the time he was uh, he, he was kind of in between programs. So he, uh, you know, we'll let him come up here and speak one of these days about how he went about his process to get his leg healthy, his knee healthy, and be able to participate in. Um, the off-season program the way he did. And Tanner's uh, certainly deserved that scholarship, and I think he'll continue to get better for us every day. And how did the players react? Oh, it was awesome. There was, uh, it, you know, it was so cool to watch the excitement. It was the last thing we said uh, to the team uh, prior to ending the team meeting on Friday evening, and uh, it was a huge celebration by the guys. Uh, they were all so happy for him. They know how hard he's worked at it. They, they know how much he loves uh, being a part of the Arizona Wildcat family. And the kids have really done a uh, a great job of embracing him, and they were they were really excited for him. We didn't get a chance to ask Jaden after the game, but what is what has, what has his process been like this week, considering he's going up against the coach where he committed to play for? Him? He's been the same guy as he was last week. Worked very hard uh, at practice, uh, prepared well uh, so far. Has a really good understanding of the game plan. Uh, we've put in first and second down and third down at this point. Uh, we'll put in the red area today uh, and has done a really good job of understanding what we want of them, you know, being a great leader. But uh, I think we'll we'll see from Jaden throughout, you know, his time here over the next few years and few weeks and few games that uh, he's going to be the same guy every day, I believe. Uh, he certainly has shown that. And uh, I think his leadership qualities and leadership skills is not going to change. He's going to be every day showing up to work, and being his guy, being the type of guy he is. Speaking of Jaden, after the game, he quickly pointed to a couple plays he wanted to bag. Is he as critical as any other quarterback you've worked with? Is he more critical of himself? What's his kind of 
The best quarterbacks that I've been around um, are the ones that, you know, will look deep inside and figure out what they need to do to get better. Uh, Coach Doherty has done a great job of instilling to him there's always an opportunity to improve. And um, you can look at the plays you made and did you make them at the best, uh, at the highest level? Um, could you have done something better even on the plays that we scored a touchdown on or even at the plays that you completed down the field? And then the plays you didn't make, the ones that he was referring to, uh, those five or six plays he would like back, I guess is probably the quote that was used. Uh, I, I hope that they all dig deep every time. And um, as coaches, we do that. Uh, I, I believe that it's my job as a head coach to be extremely critical of myself and look back on every play call and see what I could do better, uh, hold our assistant coaches to that same standard, ask them to hold me to that standard. And then uh, it's great when your leaders and your captains and your starting quarterback can, can have that same standard.